Kapowians, and welcome back to Kapow, your home away from home, your go-to guys for everything comic, cartoon, and collectible. Mm. I'm Sonia. I'm Al, and it is Iron Man <gasps> Day here at King's Comics. Yes. We'll be taking a look at how our favourite genius playboy billionaire philanthropist Goodness. has been doing in his new Marvel Now title. Absolutely. We'll also be having a look at some of our favourite storylines, and Ray will be along to show us a very cool collectible from his own personal collection. Indeed. Mm. Before that, of course, we will be doing our best to convince him that the Iron Man suit that he made out of cardboard and an old propane tank will not allow him to fly. At least not for very long, no. anyway. Mm. Uh, and if that's not enough, we're also going to bring you all the highlights from the King's Comic Curicon meetup mm. and our thoughts on the new Iron Man film. <sighs> it is exhausting this week. I am just done in. Yes, me too, but we must persevere. You're right. Onwards. Onwards and upwards. Onwards. Since we're having a bit of an Iron Man extravaganza here at Kapow, we thought we'd take a look at some of the more current titles available, both in Marvel Now and also in All Ages. Yeah, well, let's start off with the Marvel Now title. The first volume has been released in hardcover under the title Believe. We follow Tony Stark as he jets around the world in a series of increasingly impressive suits of armour, hunting down samples of the extremist protocol that have been sold on the black market to various ne'er-do-wells. It was an interesting choice by writer Kieran Gillen to retread old ground with extremists and the struggle to keep it out of the wrong hands. Look, I know that Marvel now isn't technically a reboot, but all I got whilst reading this was a vague feeling of, wait, haven't I read this before? Okay, well I think there's something to be said for going into some familiar territory before we grab Iron Man and fling him up into space <laughs> to get all Guardians of the Galaxy. Then start with one of the familiar awesome villains. Rather than sending him through a stream of short, lacklustre face-offs with a bunch of second-string bad guys like Firebrand and Living Laser. Okay, I'll agree that the plot may be a bit of a misstep. <laughs> Instead of a sort of an exciting, flowing first arc to start off this title, Gillen's instead gone with a series of punch-ups that, honestly, Iron Man kind of seems to win without breaking a sweat. And the art is equally as bad. Oh, I don't know about that. I think Greg Land has actually done some really cool work on the Iron Man suits. They look really cool. That is true, but the people themselves look awful. Most of the male faces, including Tony's, are a weird, squinty, mumpy mess, and every female looks identical. There's one frame where Pepper asks Tony if she looks like every other woman to him, and I had to laugh out loud because, yes, Pepper, you do. You just have red hair. Right. <laughs> Did you like anything about this one? The colours are good. Right. But that's about it. Mm. I'm afraid I found this incredibly tedious and not very inspired to look at either, so I'm giving it a berry. Ouch. Okay, well, look... I did like the Iron Man suits, I thought they looked good, and although I would have preferred some larger scale battles to start this title off, I thought there were a few good action moments, so I'm going to give it a borrow. Alright then, well moving straight on into the All Ages titles, this Iron Man is targeted at young readers. It takes place in the period where only Rhodey knew that Tony Stark was actually Iron Man. Hmm. Now we looked at the first two issues of this one. Issue 1 features the Mandarin, so it's a great one for younger readers who've just seen the latest movie and want to get into the comics. Issue 2 has Tony facing off against Plant Man and Spy Master. This is a really fun title, mm. and I think that writer Fred Van Lente has done a really great job at setting the tone. It kind of reminded me of the animated series Armored Adventures, mm. which I personally really like, so that was a big thumbs up for me. Yeah. <laughs> It looks really nice too. There's a good sense of dynamic motion to the characters and a high level of detail. James Cordero has put the right feel into this, I think. I, I liked it. I'm going to give it a buy. Yeah, look, I agree. I don't think this has enough sophistication for older readers, so mm. I think all ages is a bit of a misnomer. Mm. But for younger guys who really want to get into the Iron Man series, this is a great place to start. I'm giving it a buy too. We're here at the King's Comics screening of the third instalment of Iron Man. In a couple of words, Al, what are you expecting? Okay, well look, I love number one, yep. hated number two, loved Avengers, <laughs> so Iron Man is two for three at this point. Yeah. I, I want to see if we can have another hit on our hands. Right, awesome. Let's go. Sonia? I am expecting explosions, I am expecting fun, and I am expecting Tony Stark to be 
devastatingly charming, as always. Yep, I'm expecting <laughs> some stark wit and uh, also expecting a heck of a lot of action. And yes. I want lots of bots, lots of mech fights. That's what I, I just, yeah. yeah. All right, totally. time to go see it. We just came out from seeing Iron Man. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I won't tell you at all and tell you the ending right now, but no, we that will. Would be mean. Yeah, that, that would be mean. Yeah. <laughs> Sonia, what did you think? Honestly? Yes. I'm a little disappointed. Oh. I am, look, I really I enjoyed a lot of the film, but there yep. were certain elements of there that I just oh, I just wasn't happy with. There were a few yeah. plot holes that I'm not happy with, and there were a few technical things that I just kind of went, oh, come on. Really? Yeah. Uh, look. I love Iron Man, I like seeing Tony Stark doing his thing, yeah. but I just feel that I wanted something more from this film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Al? Well, look, I think it comes down to what you're going to see it for. I yes. mean, if, if you're going to see a really sort of nuanced, uh, you know, really detailed plot, this isn't the movie to see. <laughs> now, this is one that you go to see, you want to see Iron Man blowing stuff up, yep. fighting scary guys, getting absolutely crazy and things falling down around your ears. And it delivered that in spades. So if that's what you're after, you will enjoy this movie. Yeah. Yep. Well, um, myself, I was a little disappointed as well. The action, though, is intense. That amazing. Is, it is amazing. Yeah. Um, but I just had a, uh, just a few more, didn't quite meet my expectations of the film. Yeah. Just to, you know, cap off from one and two. Um, but I think uh, a lot of people will still, you know, enjoy this uh, oh, totally. a lot. And do you think that um, this is the last we'll see of Tony Stark? No, no, not at all. I mean, for one thing, we know that there's another Avengers movie out there, so we're yes. going to see Tony out there again. There he is. If there's going to be another straight Iron Man film, yeah, I reckon. They can't leave it. Yeah? Yeah, totally. You're going to carry it on? <laughs> yep. Al? Yeah, look, I, I know there was a feeling, some sort of feeling of slight finality to this one, but yeah. I do think there's going to be more. Mm -hmm. um, I think if for nothing else, just based on the amount of money this is going to make, yeah, they right. are going to keep making this. Yeah. I, yeah. And I do think we'll see Robert Downey Jr. in another solo Iron Man. It was quite comedic in places. Do you think that that aided the film or not? Or? I think it went a bit too far. Yeah. Um, I mean, yes, it's always been an element of Tony Stark's character that he's thrown off your one-liners. He's got great wit. He which does. Is, and and yeah. Robert Downey Jr. has such an amazing delivery of that as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. But in this, it got to the point where you're just like, okay, it, this is like an interview with Robin Williams. <laughs> yeah, right. You need to slow down, just allow for some pathos because yeah. it just became two rapid fire gags for me. Yeah, that right. needed to be pulled back a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Sonia, did you, do you agree? I do, I do agree. Yeah. Look, you know, Tony does have a great sense of humour. He's very witty, he's very smart, he's very, really quick on it. But yeah, I was a bit the same. I was like, and, and let's just... <laughs> pull it back, Tony. Pull it back. We're going too far. Yeah, I thought it too. It got a little bit cheese sometimes. Bit cheesy, yeah. Um, but, you know, there's still some great laugh out loud moments, which oh, yeah. I, I did enjoy as well. But <laughs> do you think Iron Man fans will be will be happy? With I this? think, providing, like Al was saying, that, you know, they go in there just to see great action and, you know, Iron Man doing Iron Man things, mm. yeah, you'll be fine. I think, I don't know. I'm an Iron Man fan and I was disappointed. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know, for me, I mean, this is definitely, this is a thousand times better than number two. I couldn't stand number two. Yeah. But number one still stands out as the best of the three. Yep. That's my opinion I, too. I, I feel the same as I did with, yeah. the, with the Dark Knight trilogy. Yep. Yeah. I still felt the first one was the best. Yep. So yeah, it's the same here. Well, that's what we thought. How about now yeah, let's uh, show you uh, what other people thought. <laughs> so uh, what did you think of the film? Uh, I liked it. Yes. Little bit underwhelmed. I didn't hate it. I actually really liked it. I enjoyed it. I would definitely go again, but 
I just wasn't ecstatic at the end, I guess. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. I loved it. Um, better than one and two. There are lots of plot holes and inconsistencies, but then, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is such a great actor. He just carries it and carries it. And the action scenes, you know, there's some really awesome stuff. So, I mean, yeah, it's not... It's not a bad film at all, but it's yeah, I, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. But better than number two, as I was discussing with someone else before. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. It was perfect. It was yeah. actually amazing. Absolutely amazing. Like I had such high expectations, and he just tore them apart. Yes. Shattered it. It's yeah. crazy. So good. Look, you don't think it gets better from the first one, but it just keeps getting better and better. Iron Man two, Iron Man three. You loved it. Can't stop. I am disappointed oh, yes? in the film. Why disappointed? It, what were your expectations? They made a joke of it, and yeah. my I had very high expectations, being you know an Avengers Joss nut. Yep. But I, I'm just disappointed. I thought it was great. You loved it? Yeah. It was really, really good. So many times during it, it was just yes. Yeah. Did, um, it, did it feel like a finale to you? No, there'll be a. Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll go on, and it's, it's going to go straight. It's it'll be like I think into Thor. Oh, yeah. And also Avengers 2. Okay. No, I actually don't. It didn't feel final. Maybe that's the problem, actually. It didn't feel final. Um, no, I don't think it's the last we see of him. Maybe it's the last we'll see of an actual... I don't think we'll maybe we'll see an Iron Man 4 necessarily, but I can definitely see Tony Stark popping up again. I do, 100%. I've always felt that way. I love yeah. him. I think he's brilliant. And I mean, I still see the redeeming qualities in the film. Yeah. But it wasn't him that chose to make it that way. Yeah. It was the director and letting John Favreau, I can't say his name, John Favreau go yeah. was just the biggest mistake Marvel has ever made, yeah. ever. You know, great personality about him and you know, he's very easy to empathise with. So I would really, really like if we saw him again in Iron Man character, not, you know. Oh, they can't they do it can't without Robert Downey Jr. They no, can't. He was born to play Tony Stark. He was, wasn't he? He can't. Yeah. Well, hello to you again, Ray. Hello. Thank you for coming along. Thank you. It does not surprise me one little bit that you have an Iron Man statue in your own collection. Well, how could I not? Really? Yep. And I've got to have an Iron Man in my collection. <laughs> but the problem was deciding which one to choose because there's so many different manufacturers out there making them. There's a lot of decent models. And I missed out on a couple of early editions. Uh, and the rest of the designs I didn't quite like. And it wasn't the, uh, you know, the, the characters so much, but the sculpt. Um, by now you know that I really like a more of an active <laughs> pose, something that tells a story. Yeah. And uh, that's particularly true with mech-like characters, and in this case Iron Man, because in his most neutral position in that that's museum pose, uh, the, it, it feels quite stagnant because you sort of lose all the facial features yeah. of the character behind the mask. So I'm looking for something to kind of counteract. Uh, against that. Against yeah. that. More of so, an active pose. Yeah. So what made you decide that this was the one for you? Well, uh, this is the Iron Man from the Avengers movie. It's the Mark VII by Kotobukiya. And I'm sure everyone out there, all the Iron Man geeks, have their favourite <laughs> armour editions. Uh, personally for me, it's uh, I like the uh, classic MK5 from yep. the 1970s, the Mark III, and this, the Mark VII. I just saw it and thought, that's Iron Man, unmistakably, and I loved the pose, and so yeah, that's why it was. With this particular figure, Kotobukiya have used a 3D sculpting technique, and it's aimed at bringing out more detail than the previous hand-sculpted releases. He stands as a sixth scale figure, in a classic pose, his legs planted, and arms held back as he fires his chest mounted beam weapon in a devastating strike. And that's what I mean about telling a story, I mean I like to make up my own, you know, he's, he's falling from the sky after being <laughs> shot down and he's plummeting toward the ground but before he, he hits he you know regains his balance and he's using his thrusters <laughs> but he comes to a skidding halt tearing up the earth around him and he's ready for that counter attack and I don't know that's something that tells a story is yeah, it's yeah much better. Well it is an incredibly powerful pose for him yeah. and the figure itself is excellently made. Absolutely. The details are so sharp and I like how it looks like the armor is actually breathing. Me too, me too. I, I think that the 3D sculpting works well for the mech-like figures. The lines end up being very clean and the paintwork in this particular figure is excellent too. There's no blurry edges and there's a nice glossy finish to it. In terms of assembly, it's very easy to put together. There wasn't a lot of weight to it though when I was putting it together. I thought, oh, I thought this would be heavier, but I was surprised by that, especially by the base. It's quite deceptive. Luckily, it still gives the desired effect, so I wasn't too bothered by that. 
and it's not flimsy though, mm. so you don't have to worry about breaking it. Ah, oh, but there is a question that has to be asked. What? Does he light up? <laughs> the burning question. Yes. He's equipped with a three mode LED chest light up feature. There's off, continuous on, and on that is triggered by a built in motion detector. Awesome source. Iron Man's eyes also feature continuous LED lighting in both these latter modes. With this piece in your collection, say goodbye to fumbling for your phone in the dark, reading by candlelight, or midnight snacking alone. Let Iron Man be your guide. Awesome. Good. Uh, <clears throat> look, that's why I like the art FX line. Yes, me too. Although uh, I do have some criticism about this statue. Yeah, statue. I thought that um, the chest beam could have been stronger, mm -hmm. and I thought that the motion sensor is a little temperamental at times. That, and also the cover switch is also a little loose as well. Um, it's a little flimsy, or at least it is on my model. The switch itself, though, is really easily accessible, which is kind of cool. You don't have yeah. to pick up the whole thing, turn it over, switch. That's back right. On, which is really nice. It is. A yeah. Good change. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And I really love the color scheme on him. Uh, mm. You've seen the Hot Toys Mark 42. I have, yes. So he's mainly gold in color. Yeah. Which I gotta say, I'm not that much of a fan of. No, me either, actually. This is Iron Man to me. The red, the gold. He looks really, really great. He's beautifully made, and he's definitely a buy from me. Yeah. Well, that's why I chose this piece as well. Uh, you know, it, it hints at uh, Tony's future design developments of the armor, mm -hmm. uh, but it still remains under mistakably Iron Man. I do like a lot more red in the armor <laughs> personally and he looks great from all angles, comes in some great packaging and the Kotobukiya Art FX statue is also reasonably priced too mm. so but of course I give it a buy. <laughs> yeah. Ray, do you um, <clears throat> often eat alone in the dark? No. Okay. Well, I'm just checking. Why are you going to do that? I worry about you. Why are you going to do that? So if you couldn't tell before, I'll tell you now, we love our Iron Man. Oh, we do. But he has popped up on our big screens four times now, so it begs the question. It does beg the question. We've seen Robert Downey Jr. in four movies as Iron Man now. Yep. Is it time for a reboot? We've seen this succeed with franchises like Batman. Yep. Is it time to bring somebody in, a new guy, to be the shellhead? Is it time for the arc <laughs> reactor to be passed? Well, that's exactly why we've come to the King's Curicon meetup to find out. We want to know what you guys think. I don't know if the Robert Downey fans are going to kill me for saying this, but I think it's time to move on. Uh, it definitely should be Robert Downey Jr. to stay. I reckon he's um, mastered his character, so I reckon he should stay. Robert Downey Jr. all the way. Of what I've heard of RDJ possibly retiring, I think he should at least do Avengers 2 so they could at least kill off the character. I know I would get a lot of people say, no, don't do so God! He's what contracted into Avengers 2. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. he's contracted until the, like, to the end of Phase 2. Yeah. So, I just, I don't think, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is so now, like, quintessentially Tony Stark. I don't think they could get away with rebooting like, with a new actor, unless they, like, cloned Robert Downey Jr. for yeah. 20 years younger, like. I like the Avengers series, and I like everything that leads up to the Avengers, but they should kill Iron Man off altogether and not bring back the character or the idea of Iron Man. You know, I love, like, 20 years down the line, we're talking about who's your favorite Iron Man, the way we talk about who's your favorite James Bond. And is there anybody that you think could make a good Iron Man so far? I don't think anyone can do it now. Maybe later on, but definitely Robert Downey Jr. for now. I haven't given it much thought, but I also thought Colin Farrell would be interesting in the role. Okay, well it looks like the people have spoken Pretty and much. they say nay. Let us not change Tony Stark. Let's mm -hmm. leave it as Robert Downey Jr. It seems to be. Personally? Mm -hmm. I don't know, I would like somebody else to give it a try. You know, there's a lot of really great actors out there who can do the witty and the smart and the sexy. Okay, any any in particular that spring to mind for you? Actually, Matt Bomer, who mm. a lot of people will see from White Collar. Yep. I think he'd make a fantastic Tony Stark. I can Young, see that. Young, sexy, charming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, look, I mean, yeah, I, I've been loving Robert Downey Jr. Mm. You know, he's, he's oh, yeah. done a really good job with Tony Stark, but I mean, yes, we do have to face facts. He is getting on in years, um, sooner or later. I mean, you know, it, although, you know, it would be kind of interesting to see like an aging Tony Stark and a city that's falling apart. You know what, we're getting off track. Getting off track. Yeah. Back to the, back I, to I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, that's really helpful. Look, we'd love to hear what you guys have to say though. Get us on Facebook, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Do you want, to, want him to stay or is it time for a new guy? Mm. What's that? 
Oh, I bought some stuff while you were off talking to people. I was working and you were buying I'm gonna go stuff. play pinball now. <laughs> not fair. It's not fair. Now, we will sometimes cop a bit of flack when we do a must-read <laughs> segment for a hero or a group of heroes, mm -hmm. and that's because people just can't believe that we didn't include that storyline or that arc that they really love. Love it! And I get that. And that's why today we're not doing a must-read segment. We're doing a, hey, this is really cool, you should check it out segment about Iron Man. Isn't that basically the same thing? Shut up! Okay. <laughs> Anyway, a good place to start with any character is an origin story. Mm. Now, Iron Man's origin story has become as familiar as Batman's and Superman's stories, thanks to Robert Downey Jr. and mm. the films. But, you know what? It's an awesome story, so it's well worth a read. It certainly <laughs> is. However, if you wander into your local comic emporium and request an original copy of the 1963 Tales of Suspense number 39, they may look at you a little oddly. <laughs> yes, but thankfully for us, Marvel have released a retelling of the classic origin story under the title Iron Man Season 1. Written by Howard Chaikin with art by Gerald Perel, Season 1 is a fast-paced ride with gritty and engaging artwork, and it's a really good place to start for anyone who wants to jump into the world of the Golden Avenger. It certainly is. Hmm. Now next up, we have a tale which always comes up in conversation <laughs> whenever the great Iron Man stories are talked of over the glowing embers of a dying campfire. Or in a hammock. Or next to a windmill, yeah. doesn't really matter. No. The Demon in a Bottle story arc, written by David Michelini and Bob Layton, this really is one of those seminal storylines which shows the decline of Tony Stark into the depths of alcoholism and despair as his life as Iron Man and his personal life slowly slide towards destruction. It's also really interesting to see John Romita Jr's artwork from this period, along with Carmine Infantino's. This story still stands up against any of the current titles, and personally, I like seeing Tony rocking the 70s stash, unlike the kind of groomed goatee we've gotten used to now. Absolutely, he is owning it. Yeah, it's a it? magnum PI stash, that one. <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> now, the final title is another one which will often come up in conversation when the great Iron Man tales are told. Indeed. A six-issue arc by Warren Ellis, Extremis. For me, this is close to a perfect Iron Man tale. An old friend and fellow scientist contacts Tony to tell him that an experimental bioelectric super soldier serum, try saying that fast, has been stolen from her. Extremis reboots the body's healing process and forces it to reconfigure the body with whatever abilities are programmed. This one really does speak to the heart of Iron Man mm. for me, you know, it has that fear of technology falling into the wrong hands and his near nihilistic sense of responsibility <laughs> when yep. it comes to that sort of thing. It really is an awesome story. And Adi Granov does an outstanding job on the artwork with truly complex emotions showing on the character faces and certainly no shying away from grim, violent images, which is kind of necessary when you're working with Warren Ellis. This is highly recommended. So those are just three of the awesome titles from Iron Man that's out there, and mm. they are just Iron Man titles. This is a good point. Now, mm. obviously, a lot of the great Iron Man stories are going to be in Avengers yep. titles, so there's there's going to be a variety of others which we haven't touched on because we were just doing solo Iron Man yes. efforts. And we know that we will have missed somebody's favourite. So mm. you know what? Get onto Facebook, get onto Twitter, get onto the YouTube comment feed and let mm. us know what your favourite Iron Man story arc, writer or artist is. Mm. This has really whetted my appetite to get into some ah. more arc reactor fueled mayhem. Absolutely! <laughs> And with that, Kapowians, our Iron Man spectacular mm. has drawn to a close. It has, sad but true. <laughs> yep. But don't worry because... Wait, what is what is Ray doing? Oh, he's got that suit on again. Uh, he's got the suit on is, again. Is he lighting a fuse? Oh, okay, this is bad. We need to yeah. wrap this yeah, up. We gotta We're going to get out okay, there. Okay, guys, don't forget that you can head on over to sftv.com.au mm -hmm. uh, for this week's mini episode. Yes, this week we take a look at House of Golden Bones as well as a new Boom Studios one, uh, Polarity. Yes, uh, also next week on the show we'll be doing a preview of a new Humanoids title. Oh. Oh, that's bad. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go get some water. I'll get some bandages. We'll see you next week, guys. Bye.